Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go ahead and paint my red coffee cup and my green coffee cup. I'm going to try and get that done in one little video here. So I have red and green. Okay, so again, here's my little paint container. Look at how much paint I have in here. It's not filling the whole container. I just have a little bit of each color. You can always go back and get more. And then I have my paper plate that I'm mixing my colors on still. I'm still kind of using the same plate. I have my brushes. I have my cup of water. Okay, so maybe I'll do um, the green coffee cup first. So again, and uh, I just have a scrap of paper. You can do this obviously in your um, sketchbook or on your paper plate if you want. But I'm going to use this scrap piece of paper. So if my local color, my main color is going to be green, I know I didn't give you a green, so you're going to have to make your green. And obviously when you make your green, you're going to use your cobalt blue and your yellow to make your green. Okay, your two primaries are going to make this secondary color. But then, you know, remember you have this base color. How do I make that color darker? How do I make it lighter? So you, I want you to try that out before you start going to your painting. Um, so maybe if I add more yellow to it, what happens? It's going to be a lighter green. And maybe you will probably have to get several brushes when you do this again. Ah, did not want to do that. Maybe if I add, you know, what happens when I add white to that green? Let me see if I can have another one. What happens when I add white to that or to over here? So I'm kind of like mixing these colors and seeing what how they do because I'm going to need to figure that out before I actually go to my coffee mug. So here I have more cobalt blue than my already previous green. You know what happens? Do I need that color? What happens if I add, so here's like this little bit of phthalo blue. Okay, that really dark blue. What happens when I add that into my green or with my yellow? You know, what color does that make? Am I going to need that color in my coffee cup? Okay, I'm going to try all these different color combinations. What happens if I add, so here's phthalo green. What happens when I add phthalo green with this green? So then I had to go grab more yellow and more cobalt blue. You know, what, what happens when I do that? And again, it doesn't always come up great here on my, my video. What about, again, I'm going to have that base green. What happens, so I'm going to make my green again. What happens when I put bright red with it? Am I going to need that color? That gets really nice and dark. Am I going to need that? I might need that. And those darker values, it kind of almost, so if you add a little bit too much red, then it's going to turn violet. But it's, and then that violet turned with that yellow kind of gave me like that dark brown color. Am I going to need that? I don't know. So you have to play around with these colors and see what they do. I can't stress that enough before you actually go to like your painting. What happens when I put a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with my green? You know, what happens there? What kind of color does that turn out to be? Kind of like this yellowy olive type color. Okay. What about when I do the raw umber? There's my base. And then again, let me get another brush. What happens when I mix my green with that raw umber? You know, what does that look like? So you need to try all these different color combinations. I can't stress that enough to see what you're going to need. Okay, so 
So I went ahead and cleaned my brushes off. And like after you've practiced mixing your colors, you know, have this off to the side. Have that next to you to always refer back to it um, so that you don't forget. I need some of this stuff. All right, so I'm going to start with like my main color, which is going to be like my green, my base. A little bit of a darker green, so I might add a little bit more. Cobalt blue. Maybe a little bit more. Yellow blue. And with having that burnt sienna underneath, really helps get that darker over there. And see again, I'm painting with the shape of it. The right side of my little coffee cup is a little bit lighter green. I'm probably gonna have a little bit more yellow when I mix. So I wanna get that down pretty quick here so that it blends with what I previously did. And I can either use the brush that I'm using to help blend it, or even a brush. Um, like a brush that doesn't have anything on it. What I've talked about in some of the other ones, or the other videos, like a dry brush that has nothing on it. So now I'm coming in and trying to get that really dark over there. Need some maybe bright red. And raw umber with my green to get that a little bit darker. And remember, sometimes you have to let it you have to let stuff dry a little bit in order to layer. down here and then kind of some little lip my shadow is gonna probably be bright red and a little green that's what I did earlier on my other shadow so I'm just gonna keep that same dark color And my handle. So I'm going to put down like that base, that base green, and then I kind of felt like I needed to bring it over here a little bit more. So I put down that base green, and now I'm going to come in with my darker value. It's going to be like that pale weird green, and cobalt blue, and yellow, a little bit of yellow. So I have the darker value in my, my handle here. I might need to bring in more like dark red. Too much. I don't find this to like mix because then it'll get violet. But I do want enough because I want to be able to see where it is dark. You know, to have that darker value. It can't all just be like a light green or like one green. You have to have dark green. 
middle green, light green. You have to have all those happening. Now I'm countering with, it gets really tiny over here, so it's tricky. Countering with like a lighter green to kind of help make it look curving over here. So I used a little bit more like yellow to lighten that up. I want to use white. White can help, but sometimes it can actually hurt. I'm kind of liking how dark this is over here. I'm kind of happy with how that happened pretty quick. Soften that a little bit, blend it a little bit more. Then in my image, you know, there's this the rim. It's like a yellowish green. So I made sure I kind of left that alone for now, but now I think I'm gonna try and do that here because I'm gonna let my I'm gonna let my handle kind of dry and sit there for a second. I'll come back to it in a minute. Just gonna clean it up. So now I'm gonna kind of do the rim. So it's kind of like this lighter yellow green that needs to pop. Probably should use a smaller brush. We'll try this one and see what happens. I mixed a little bit of white, but not too much. I probably need to come back and put more yellow in it. Yeah, I need more yellow. I need more yellow. With that same color, I'm kind of trying to find other places to put it at the same time. I'm trying to already have it on my plate, so now I'm going to kind of like, you know, do I need it over here in my handle? Mm. Sometimes your brush doesn't want to get as tiny as you would like it. It can be a little frustrating. A little brighter. You can see a little glare there. Okay, so now I feel like I need to counter this a little bit and kind of come back and kind of. Add my green to kind of thin that out a little bit. Merge that a little bit with that. Soften this just a tiny bit. I do want to be able to see that it is dark. And then I came back and I mixed a little bit more white. Because now I'm kind of ready to put in more of these like little bright highlights.
Okay, so I'm gonna leave the green coffee cup for a little bit. So then I moved on to, now I'm gonna move on to the red coffee cup. And so what I've already done here is I've mixed my bright red with um, my phthalo green, my phthalo blue, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, white, raw umber, to see what happens when I mix my bright red with all these different colors. So again, that's something you really wanna try doing before you jump into your object. Because my bright red is my, um, my local color, my main color, and so I need to know how to make it darker, how to make it lighter, what color combinations I need to use. Okay, so you really need to do that and then have that always handy to look at to refresh your memory how to make those colors. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the red coffee cup still. So again, I'm using my bright red. I'm going to use, it's like my main color. It's like my medium value, basically. Now, how am I going to get that bright red darker. You probably should hopefully you've already figured that out. I'm gonna use my phthalo green. It gets like a really nice deep color. Again, depending on how much red you put in, how much phthalo green you put in, it kind of like obviously affects how violet it is or whatnot. And I'm going to use another brush here that has nothing on it to help blend those two together. And, you know, I always make sure I try not to have too much water hanging out in your brushes from after cleaning them because it really affects what the acrylic paint does. Um, it thins it out. But sometimes you do want that, but most of the time you really don't because then it won't lay on the canvas like you want it. I mix a little bit of white. I don't want to do too much because then again white can be pretty overpowering. I do need a little bit to get it lighter over there on that far right because that's where my light source is but not too much and always when I'm doing this really paying attention to my reference photo. I'm always going back and forth and looking at my photo that's up above me, obviously. You can't see it, but I kind of came back in and put more of just the bright red to kind of get more of that base color down. And again, I'm kind of leaving that area alone up there for my rim. Um, Okay, I'm gonna move on to the handle for a second. And again, I'm gonna start with just base red. You know, it's thick. It's not just like a skinny little line because in a second, just like what we did for the green one, so here's like my base color, right? But then, I'm in a minute, I'm going to get the darker values and the lighter values on here in a second so that it looks three-dimensional instead of just a flat, flat color. So I'm going to start with my darker values. My phthalo green and bright red, I like to use just to get it darker. Not too much of it. You got to kind of look at where it is on the inside. There's a little bit down here. And if it gets too dark, I'll come back with like my bright red to kind of soften it back a little bit. I don't want too much sometimes. You definitely need enough so that you can actually there's some contrast happening. I'll probably mix a little bit of white to kind of soften this and lighten this red. Just a little bit. Not too much. I don't want it to be pink. 
So if you want that nice red color. I felt like I needed to add more. This phthalo green and bright red darker color. Here, which is more of like a red. I need to shape that better and clean it up. I will come back later and just do a little bit of white for the highlights. I'm not really there. I'm going to leave that alone for a little bit, let it dry some. And now I'm going to come over here. This is just, you know, this is like the opposite of what you just did on the front of the cup. You know, it's lighter on the left. So I'm using my base color. Ooh, that shape will be better, whatever. And then I'm going to use my darker value to get that shadow in there. Because there's no light hitting inside that area of the cup. But I do need to remember, I'm going to have like a rim for the lip of the cup. I cannot see, there is like a crazy hole. But look at the shape that that shadow is. You know, don't just paint half of it dark and half of it light. Like look at the shape that it's actually like creating inside there. It's that little bit of an angle. And then I came back in with another brush to kind of soften those two together because they they get, it's not like a drastic line where those values change. You can't just have a line. They have to blend together. And blend it by using, you know, a brush that has nothing on it. Okay, so I'm kind of exaggerating this right now, but I'm doing it on purpose because I'm going to pull it back here in a second. I need to fix that curve. That's really not great. And so now I'm going to pull it back with just my main red. You see how I softened that a little bit because I knew I had red left on my brush. And then I softened that. And now I'm going to try to clean up my rim of the coffee cup. And in the meantime, try to clean up the shape because it is not looking great. And I can't see. And it kind of evaporates over there. It kind of just falls away in the back. So I kind of came in with like a strong, uh, a stronger pink than I probably would have, but that's okay because I just need it there. And then I'm going to come back and like soften it with a red. I need to be able to see it at the moment. And then I'll lighten it too with like the whitish highlights that I need to see it. I need to fix this shape. It is not great over here. The way it ends and connects. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and put that guy in there. Why not? I was ready. Put that little highlight in. And I'm kind of softening it over here a little bit. Let's add a little bit more white. Don't go overboard. It gets really thin, so hopefully you have some tiny brushes. I just try to get that little. Really thin. I need to come back and clean up that edge. Uh, 
see how if I got too big, then I can come back. Hopefully then you gotta match that color though, but I kind of painted over it. But it decreased my mess up stuff. I need to really fix the back part of my coffee in the middle area. But it's still a little messy. <coughs> I'm going to spread it all the way up here a little bit with that lightness. And again, it's so important to have brushes that have your darker values so that you're not switching between brush, like one brush, because it's just taking up so much time. So you always, by now, hopefully, always have like a brush that has lighter values, a brush with the darker values. I have four that I'm dealing with right now. I have one that just has like my main red color. One that has just the darker value, that phthalo green and bright red happening. And the one that has a I like the white mixed with the red a little bit. I'm not going to bring back some more red in here to kind of I think I'm ready. I'm going to bring in my highlights. A little. They may be kind of pink. They may be kind of super white. This guy's really white, so I need to I put them down, and then I needed to wait a little bit. And now I'm going to come back and like really layer it on. But I'm going to have to come back in a second. Now I'm going to add this guy. Maybe I'll add another one here. And again, it's like I had to add it, but then I'm going to have to come back in a second to really make it. Shine. Look at that. There's ridges in these coffee cups. You can kind of see a little bit. Don't worry about that. Right now, don't worry about that stuff. To get to trying to get these colors to blend right now, I'm just trying to mix these right colors and getting them to trying to get this to look like a form, an object. I'm going to call it done because it's been about 30 minutes. All right. 